Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, I will use to start uh, one uh, painting that, um, in fact, I took from from uh, a book from Xavier Montes. As you know, he he has a lot of reflection about uh, dwelling and housing and how to live and <coughs> how houses today are uh, adaptable or not to our present life and. And in fact, he's talking more about the the, the, the non-programmed spaces, uh, the continuity of spaces, the equality of uh, surface as a tool to bring uh, flexibility. <clears throat> it's not, in fact, what I'm talking about, but somehow it's uh, it's related. Uh, we will establish some links with it also. I, I will talk, in fact, about the circulation spaces. <coughs> um, they are the, 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 the mortar that articulates the, the inhabitable rooms <coughs> in, a, in a distribution of a house. I will do it uh, through three projects of our office because we, we dealt recently and more and more with this subject with working with these uh, spaces in our uh, in our projects not only housing uh, not only dwelling but uh, anyway it's the same attitude and strategy <coughs> um, and it's good a strategy useful for uh, to talk about the qualification of the interstices in uh, in the housing distribution it's an architectonic subject, not only uh, specific of housing. When we design um, a dwelling as a machine of inhabiting, uh, we tend to, to frame, to fix the uses to specific spaces with the specific sizes, specific proportions. The bedroom is to sleep, the toilet, the bathroom is for personal hygiene, the kitchen to cook, the living room, maybe it's more ambiguous, but also it's very specific, uh, with a certain surface. Mm. Also those uh, rooms uh, usually have this different uh, size. No? So, usually we, try, we tend to make distributions that petrify life somehow, in one single way of living. So there's not much space for uh, unexpected, for ephemeral, for extra. Uh, in housing we have uh, some references of this attitude, uh, ambiguous spaces that link one to the other, uh, like Mies or uh, Frances Michan in this project that we always talked about in, in the second year. All the, all the spaces of transition that are linked and have size that can be used for many things. <clears throat> or even in this uh, detail, a minor uh, space in the Casa Malaparte, the, this vestibule that links to, to the bath and the bedrooms. We had um, uh, this apartment to do, it's a quite small, 70 square meters of harvestment, uh, oriented east-west with uh, terrace on the east. We tried to put all the, the most uh, polyvalent spaces in the center and all the service areas and, and uh, closed spaces, more programmed spaces in the edges to, to bring regularity to the, to the geometry that was quite difficult. So one uh, generous vestibule with the entrance of the apartment 
one generous uh, distribution space on the rooms area and uh, and the big living room. Like other times, we 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 found ourselves somehow maximizing the surface of the in-between spaces to bring them a uh, possibility to be used uh, for other things. The space in front of the bedrooms can be used as a, for the children to play, for example. Uh, and it's a double strategy, maximizing this kind of space, bringing this possibility to unexpected and at the same time it, it has uh, another side that is that we minimize somehow the programmatic spaces. I just go through from the entrance to the living room. All this transparency to the, the entrance, the kitchen. This is the space in front of the of the bedrooms. All the spaces are linked in diagonal somehow. Also the bedrooms can be attached to this uh, axis that goes from facade to facade. And the service areas are somehow at the edge. Kitchen is uh, can be closed. The second project I will explain is a, an archaeologic site in the center of Barcelona that we had to, to make an adaptation to make it visitable. <coughs> in this case we introduce a, a subject that uh, interests us a lot is, and it's related with the goals of the project. And we take it from the, from the Roman villas uh, morphology and structure. Uh, the way that you go in, the linking of spaces through thick uh, walls, thick doors, mm. going from the entrance and step by step discovering what is beneath. So the chaining of these public spaces, no? like in this villa in Pompeia, how this Spaces are changed always with this thickness, this thickness, or in this house of Panza also in Pompeii. All the service uh, building the limit somehow. We found this. This is a, a municipal offices building. It has five floors, so the, the stairs and elevator nucleus is quite important. And they found this Roman villa at the end of the building. <coughs> and we had to make it visible. So, but at the same time, the, the building has to, to continue working during the week as, a, as an office building. So this was a difficult how to uh, manage the cohabitation of these two functions, sometimes at the same time, sometimes uh, different. What we did is this, this succession of vestibules that did bring you to the uh, exhibition space with the site, and then you go back another vestibule uh, extension to, to go back. You have mixed also the, the, the stairs that go up to the second third floor. You have the elevator here, you have the toilets of the ground floor here. So it's a, it's a circulation space to arrive to the archaeological site, but at the same time it's a functional space for the building. It's the tour. 
There's also another layer of information that we bring is the position of this archaeologic site in the Roman uh, Barquino, Barcelona, um, because it's in just in the position of the Roman wall. This is out of the wall, this is the thickness of the wall, of the Roman wall. This is the intervallum, the street that is between the Roman wall and the first houses. And this is the space of the, of the first house. We, we added this information through materiality of pavement, for example. Also, this succession brings us some of the tectonicity of the Roman uh, architecture. Anyway, we build it in uh, light materials, but somehow the strategy is related. That's how you enter. I will make like a tour through the space. First vestibule, we, we added this. Uh, we worked with a museologist and they, they added these uh, sculptures. Uh, related to past reliefs of the Romans, uh, bringing this information of activities that were done out of the wall, in the wall, with this soldier. And in the thickness of the, of the doors, we see always the section of, uh, of how is it built, no? Uh, wooden panels and the thickness, so you feel this passage between one space to the other. This is the last vestibule before you enter. You see the stair to go up to the to the side. And then the side is a glass box, another materiality that uh, sometimes is transparent, sometimes is, is a mirror, depending on the light because there are some things exhibited can appear or disappear. When you go to the other side, you see the Roman wall, a piece of the Roman wall that is part of the structure of the building, and you go out. This is the section. And to finish, um, this is a competition that we were selected to do in, in Germany, and we here we can uh, uh, maybe talk to about um, hierarchy of this of these intermediate spaces of these circulation spaces <coughs> um, spaces with different dimensions with different sites uh, that can help us to to bring some hierarchy to the function of the building. This is a the urban structure of this periphery of Stuttgart, the school is this building, a pavilion school, and we had to add in this part a building for a swimming pool and a small gymnasium that should work also as a polyvalent space for the neighborhood. The strategy was to, to fill the maximum with a, a strong shape, uh, excave or extract some pieces for uh, little courtyards that bring privacy. Then we added the big rooms, the swimming pool and the, and the pavilion. And this is all the service and circulation area. Then with all this uh, linking of uh, vestibules with some hierarchy, we can arrive to all the services and we can block. Also, we can block, for example, the swimming pool when the, when the big hall is used for the neighborhood, for example. So, the program can be used in different ways with this uh, opening and closing doors. The, the changing rooms for the hall, but it has an, also another entrance when it's used for the neighborhood. There's also a bar that can be closed or open. The interior space and the exterior space uh, express one to the other, but in a different way. The interior 
the exterior is more related to the to the agricultural architecture, vernacular architecture of this area with the slope roofs. And in the interior has another shape related to the way we, we built now. Uh, vaulted spaces to being more uh, uh, comfort. Is the main hall, for example. And we finish with the central vestibule, this succession of vestibules with different scale, the hierarchization of the uses in the spaces of this, the way we live the building. And that's all. Thank you.